The nature's most amazing gift to mankind is perhaps the rain. It looks so beautiful that from ancient times a type of myth has developed regarding rain. An Irish myth says that whenever a rainbow appears, they always end at a spot where some leprechaun spot of gold is buried. However, everybody likes to see the rain. In this video, I'm going to explain the physics behind the formation of a rainbow. Rainbow is formed when there is both sunlight and raindrops in the sky. It is best seen when the sun is low and behind the observer and the raindrops are in front of the observer, possibly from a light drizzle. If conditions are favorable, fog, mist or waterfalls instead of raindrop will do. The phenomena is quite simple, as simple as refraction. Visible light as you know is a mixture of colored light waves of different wavelengths. When light enters a denser medium from the rarer medium, due to change in velocity the light ray bends towards the normal which is called refraction. Now different wavelength waves of different colors bend differently causing to split the white light into its constituent spectrum of colors and this is called dispersion of light. This dispersion happens in a prism. There is another principle due to which rainbow is actually formed. This principle is total internal reflection. When a light ray comes from denser to rare medium, the light ray bends away from the normal. This is the angle of incidence. There is a critical angle when the refracted ray no longer goes through to the rarer medium but the refracted ray passes on to the interface of the two mediums like this. When the incident angle exceeds the critical angle, reflection happens and this is called total internal reflection. Now let me explain what actually happens when sunlight falls on a raindrop. For this purpose we consider the raindrop to be spherical in shape. The light ray first enters the raindrop and gets refracted. This is the first time the sun's ray meets the interface between denser and rarer medium. It gets dispersed into its constituent spectrum of colors. A part of this light undergoes total internal reflection while meeting the interface between the denser and rarer medium for a second time. After this reflection, the rays meet the interface for the third time and this time the dispersed rays get out of the raindrop like this and due to refraction once again it gets more dispersed. For a clearer ray diagram I will not show all the colors of the dispersed rays. The red and violet rays are only shown here. The other colors always exist in between them. It has been calculated that the red light has been deviated by an angle almost equal to 42 degrees and the violet light has been deviated by an angle almost equal to 40 degrees. When we think of a two-dimensional platform, this 42 and 40 degrees angle emerging from the raindrop can only be limited to two directions, one above and one below the incident sun's ray. But guys, the nature happens to be three-dimensional and not two-dimensional. So dispersed rays emerge from the raindrop in the form of a cone like this. Red light is in the outermost part of the cone and violet occupies the inner part and the rest of the colors remain in between. Inside the violet ring, the sun's ray is reflected out, imparting a bright white tint in the center of the cone. Also no ray is emerged outside this cone, and absence of color means black, so there is a darkish color outside the cone. Now these colors that are emerging from the raindrop should reach our eyes for proper perception of the colors by our brain. Suppose a person is standing over here with the sun behind him. Now there are millions of raindrops in the atmosphere in front of him. But I'll consider only three raindrops at three different heights. Watch the topmost raindrop. The cone of colors emerging from the raindrop does not reach the eyes of the person. In fact, the darkish color outside the cone reaches the observer's eye. Now look at the raindrop in the middle. The color cone emerging from the raindrop has the colors positioned at 40 to 42 degrees angle with the horizontal as has been already described. Now if the raindrop is connected with the observer by a straight line and makes an angle of 40 to 42 degrees with the horizontal, the observer can see the colors of the rainbow. So the raindrops at a particular height delivering rays at a stipulated angle to the observer is only capable of sending the colors to the observer. Now let us consider the raindrop which is at the bottom. 
see that in this case the bright middle part of the cone is reaching the eyes of the observer. Now let us watch a photograph of the rainbow. You can understand why the raindrops below the rainbow appears bright and the raindrops above the rainbow appears dark. Now one thing is for sure, the raindrops that are sending colors to a particular observer are not the same for another observer. Different observers can see the rainbow from different raindrops. A raindrop that is sending color to a particular person will not possibly send color to another person standing at a different position. So the rainbow is not stationary. It moves with change of your position and one cannot reach the end of a rainbow to achieve the gold pot. But the rainbow is not a straight line. It is semicircular bow shaped. The reason behind this is simple. The ray from the raindrop which will impart color to the observer should fall at an angle 40 to 42 degrees. Since the atmosphere is three-dimensional, the raindrops that can make this particular angle will come from a circle in the sky to form the shape of a cone, with the observer as the vertex of the cone. The half of this circle will be under the horizon. This explains the semicircular bow shape of a rainbow. Of course, if you are lucky enough to see a rainbow while traveling in an airplane, the horizon does not act as an obstacle at this high altitude and you can observe the circular rainbow. Now, if you watch the rainbow more closely, you can see the red color at the top and the violet color at the bottom. To explain this, I will take the help of the ray diagram of the raindrop showing only red and violet color. It is clear from the diagram that the raindrop on the top is sending red colors to the observer and the raindrop at the bottom is sending violet colors. So this determines the order in which the colors are visible in the rainbow. But hold on guys, there are some more questions still to be answered. Sometimes there are two rainbows visible in the sky. The rainbow I described already is the primary rainbow, which is this bottom one. Under favorable conditions, a secondary rainbow can be seen just above the primary rainbow. The secondary rainbow is not as intense as the primary rainbow. The secondary rainbow has its color order just the reverse of the primary rainbow. The reason behind this is that there are some raindrops where sunlight enters and gets refracted and dispersed as a result and then internal reflection happens twice before emerging out of the raindrop. Since only a part of the ray gets reflected, the two reflections reduces the intensity of the emerging ray so much that the secondary rainbow is always fainter than the primary rainbow. The emerging ray makes an angle of 50 to 53 degrees with the incident sun's ray, which was 40 to 42 degrees in the case of primary rainbow. 50 to 53 is greater than 40 to 42, which raindrops higher up can only make. This is the reason why secondary rainbow is above the primary rainbow. Here the difference is 3 degrees, whereas in primary rainbow the difference was 2 degrees. So the secondary rainbow is a bit wider than the primary rainbow. This ray diagram clearly explains the reverse color order of the secondary rainbow. The position in between the primary and secondary rainbow appears as a dark band and is called Alexander's dark band. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you wish to see similar videos and don't forget to leave a like. Thanks once again.